let's have a look at this question the question is what is the correct product for this reaction that is given to you and you can see in the reaction we have an alkene which is made to react with hi in the presence of h2o2 so first of all let me tell you this h2o2 is peroxide and yes whenever we heard of peroxide one thing comes in our mind and that is kharash effect yes isn't it so now in this reaction also is kharash effect present or not let's understand so let me tell you uh, when you react hi with alkene in the presence of peroxide then kharash effect is not observed and in fact the reaction goes by markovnikov's addition all right now the question is why is it so let me tell you so basically for uh, you can say this reaction to proceed through free radical addition which is what is observed in case of kharash effect uh, the propagation step needs to be exothermic otherwise if it let's say the propagation step becomes endothermic then the reaction becomes reversible all right and uh, you can see in case of hi if you see the first step of propagation which is uh, this particular step wherein we have this ch3 ch3 and then c single bond ch and ch3 you can see when this uh, double bond sorry when this alkene is made to react with i radical uh, to form uh, you can see uh, the to form this particular product let me write it here ch3 ch3 and in fact let me tell you this is not product basically this is uh, the intermediate that you will get so what you will get here is c c h and ch3 and you can see the iodine will get attached here all right so that the radical that you will get or the radical intermediate that you will get will be more stable all right so now uh, when you get this particular intermediate or radical intermediate uh, through this process you can see this process is endothermic it is not exothermic because of which this process becomes reversible all right and since it becomes reversible the forward reaction will not be that much favorable all right so let me put it like this all right so it becomes reversible wherein the backward process uh, will be like more uh, you can say dominant over the forward all right and this is because uh, you can say the free radical uh, propagation will not continue properly clear and the second reason why uh, you can say this do not follow the anti markovnikov's addition is because the i radical has a high tendency to combine with the other i radical to form i2 clear so these are the two reasons that explains why with hi anti markovnikov's addition or you can say kharash effect or the peroxide effect is not observed so now the question is uh, then how do we uh, how do we make the product in this case so let's see so what happens in this case is this hi dissociates into h plus and i minus all right wherein this h plus will act as the electrophile and i minus will act as the nucleophile all right and now what happens is this h plus will attack first and uh, you can see the pi bonds will shift towards h plus now the question arises how this pi bond will break because we know that h plus will uh, take the pi electrons isn't it so now how this pi bond will break let us understand so there are two possible ways in which this pi bond can break first way is towards this side let's call it as uh, first way and the second way is towards this side now the question is which one is more stable or which one uh, basically will lead to generation of a more stable intermediate let us understand so you can see if i break it through uh, you can say uh, if i break it as per the process 1 or if i break it as per the direction 1 then what you will get is you will get ch3 ch3 and c and you can see there will be a negative charge on this and then c a positive charge on this h and ch3 this is what you will get isn't it absolutely so now you can see one important thing to note here is you will never uh, get a carbon ion formed in this process why because uh, you can see as soon as this bond breaks the h plus will take the electrons and it will get attached to the carbon here thereby what you will get actually is the carbocation intermediate all right similarly if you break it the other way uh, what you will get is ch3 ch3 now this time positive charge will come on this carbon and then you have ch and ch3 <clears throat> and obviously here h will attach all right so now you can see uh, we are getting carbocation in this as well now what we have to do is we have to compare the stability of the carbocations generated so now you can see in this uh, case in this particular case uh, the stability of carbocation can be uh, you can say found out using hyperconjugation effect we just have to calculate 
the number of alpha hydrogens. So let's do this. So here you can see we have three alpha hydrogens and this one is the fourth alpha hydrogen. So clearly you can see here we have four alpha hydrogens. And in the next case, in the second case, uh, we have three plus three, six and one seven. So here we have eight alpha hydrogens. Obviously, since uh, you can say that in this particular carbocation, the number of alpha hydrogens are more, thereby the number of hyper conjugating structures will be more. So this one will be more stable and this eventually will lead to the major product. All right. And now how the major product will be formed? It is very simple. The I negative part that is the nucleophilic part will now attack on the positive charge carbon to form a product which will look like this. So you can see it will look like this I here and C H 2 C H 3. So this is what you will get as a product. Now let's match with the options. All right. So now you can see in option A here C H 3 C H 3 then I is attacking on that particular carbon which is uh, that particular double bonded carbon which is carrying less number of hydrogen you can see here the number of hydrogen is zero on this carbon the number of hydrogen is one and we know that since it is Markovnikov's addition uh, the negative part of the addendum should attack on that particular carbon uh, which carries less number of hydrogens isn't it so that double bonded carbon in fact all right so now you can see here in option a uh, we are getting the product that we exactly uh, formed just uh, a minute ago so therefore this option A has to be the right answer. Uh, move, uh, moving to option B, here you can see the I is attacking on the carbon bearing, uh, the double bonded carbon bearing more number of hydrogens, which is uh, the case opposite to that uh, of Markovnikov's addition. Or you can say this is the case with anti-Markovnikov's addition, which is not followed in this case. So this is not right. Moving to option C, uh, here also you can see the iodine is attacking as per the anti-Markovnikov's rule. Moreover, the number of carbon is changing in the product, which is not at all possible. So now you can see this cannot be the answer. Moving to option D, which is none of the above, which is obviously not right. So clearly you can see that the right answer to this question is option A. Let's have a look at this question. The question is very simple. And you can see in this question, we have to find the product of the reaction given to you. And in the reaction, we have uh, two butene, which is made to react with HBr. Important thing, there is no peroxide. So obviously what you have to do is you have to simply go for electrophilic addition. You have to follow the Markovnikov's addition, isn't it? You have to follow the Markovnikov's rule, sorry. All right. So what you have to simply do is we know that this HBr will give H plus and Br minus. Now H plus will act as electrophile, Br minus will act as a nucleophile. The next thing is how to break this pi bond. Why? Because we know that these pi electrons will be taken by H plus. All right. So now in this case, you can see since the molecule is symmetrical, so uh, it doesn't matter whether you break it towards right or whether you shift the electron towards the left. All right. So whether you shift it towards the right or whether you shift it towards the left doesn't matter. So let us shift the electron towards the right side. All right. So what you will get as a result is CH3, CH with a plus charge. Then you can see uh, since electrons are moving towards this carbon, uh, what will happen immediately uh, these electrons will be taken by H plus. So what you will get here is CH2 and then CH3. So thereby you are getting a two degree carbocation. All right. And now on this positive charge bearing carbon, this nucleophile that is Br negative will attack. Thereby what you will get as a product is CH3, CH, Br, CH2, CH3. So this is what you will get as a product. Let's now match with the options. Now you can see in option A, uh, since two Br are getting attached here, which is not at all possible. So this is not right. Uh, moving to option B, here you can see exactly the same product that we want. Isn't it? We have uh, formed this particular product and this option B is exactly the same. So definitely option B is the answer. Moving to option C, here you can see that Br is getting attached here. But then uh, in this case, the number of carbons are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Uh, whereas you can see in the reactant we had just four carbons so obviously addition of one more carbon is not at all possible in this case so option c cannot be the product so definitely the only answer to this question is option b let's have a look at this question the question is uh, we have to find the correct order of reactivity of addition of hydrogen halides with alkene very simple question so let me tell you whenever hydrogen halides are added to alkene we know that these hydrogen halides break to give H plus and X minus, isn't it? Yes, I'm specifically talking about 
the uh, the markonikov's addition here all right basically the addition through markonikov's rule this is what i'm talking about here all right so we know that it breaks into h plus and x minus so that means uh, the rate of reaction or the reactivity depends upon the bond strength of the hx bond that means weaker is the hx bond easy it will be for hx to dissociate into h plus and x minus thereby leading to a forward rate isn't it or leading to a faster rate of reaction so what you have to simply look for is the bond strength of hx bond now we know that uh, in this case since we have h f hcl hbr and hi we know that uh, since uh, this fcl br and i these halogens are present down the group or you can say if you move from f towards i then actually you are moving down the group in group 17 and as you move down the group we know that the size of the uh, atom increases due to which the bond length will also increase all right that means the hi bond length will be maximum and hf bond length will be minimum among these four all right now as the bond length increases the bond strength decreases which means the hx bond strength will be least for hi and it will be maximum for hf so let us write down the uh, order of bond strength of hx bond so we can say bond strength bond strength of hx bond follows the order uh, hi will have the weakest bond strength then hbr then hcl and the strongest one is hf and we know that uh, stronger is the hx bond strength uh, less will be the reactivity all right so that means the order of reactivity order of reactivity will follow the order hi will have maximum reactivity then hbr then hcl and the least reactive will be hf all right so let's now match with the options so you can see here uh, the options are option a is hbr has the maximum reactivity which is not right so this is not correct now option b is hcl will have the maximum reactivity again not right now option c is hi will have the maximum uh, then hbr then hcl and least is of hf which is exactly uh, the one that we have just seen and option d is again saying hf has the maximum reactivity which is not right so obviously the only correct answer to this question is option c let's have a look at this question and you can see in this question we have to write the correct order for heat of hydrogenation of the compounds given to us so very very interesting question let us understand the factors on which this heat of hydrogenation depends all right so first of all let me tell you a basic thing and that is this heat of hydrogenation or enthalpy of hydrogenation uh, basically is dependent on the first factor is the number of pi bonds all right that means a molecule with more number of pi bonds will have a higher heat of hydrogenation and the second factor is it is inversely proportional to the stability that means that means more is the stability less will be the heat of hydrogenation all right so these are the two factors on which this heat of hydrogenation depends all right so now let us analyze these molecules so now you can see in molecule 1 2 and 3 uh, 3 has two uh, double bonds or two pi bonds whereas 1 and 2 have only one one pi bond each which means the heat of hydrogenation will be maximum for molecule 3 isn't it so that means 3 has to be the one with maximum heat of hydrogenation which means option a and c are not possible now the answer has to be between b and d only now let's compare between 1 and 2 so you can see in case of molecule 1 and molecule 2 since we have one pi bond in both of uh, these molecules we have to check with the help of stability so now you can see this is alkene and for alkene we can check stability with the help of hyper conjugation so what we have to do for this yes we have to calculate the number of alpha hydrogens now you can see in this particular case in molecule uh, 1 we have three alpha hydrogens here and three here that means six and then again we have two alpha hydrogens here and two alpha hydrogens here that means the total of 10 alpha hydrogens so here in molecule 1 we have 10 alpha hydrogens and now let's count in molecule 2 so here you can see in this molecule 2 we have 2 and 2 4 alpha hydrogens now it is very clear that molecule 1 since has more number of alpha hydrogens will be having more number of hyper conjugating structures thereby it is more stable than molecule 2 so we know that more is the stability less will be the heat of hydrogenation so we can say that the correct order should be third will have the maximum heat of hydrogenation followed by uh, second and then the least will be for molecule one 
So let's match with the options. Now you can see in option B, exactly the same order is mentioned, whereas in option D, the order is not right, which means only option B is the answer to this question. Let's have a look at this question. And you can see in this question, what we have to do is, uh, we have to find the product when propene is made to react with chlorine in the presence of CCL4. Very interesting question. Let us see what happens in this case. So first of all, let's draw the structure of propene. So it is CH2 double bond, CH and then CH3. Now when it is made to react with Cl2 in the presence of CCL4, what happens is this Cl, uh, you can say chlorine of this Cl2 will get added across this double bond. And what you will get is simply, you can see this double bond will break. And what you will get is one chlorine gets added here. The other chlorine gets added here. And this is what you will get as a product. Now, important thing to understand here is uh, this in this reaction, uh, the addition takes place in anti manner. That means if one chlorine attacks from, you can say, below the plane, then the other one will attack from above the plane. All right. So this is one important thing that you have to note. The next thing is uh, this reaction proceeds through formation of a three membered cyclic transition state. All right. Uh, but yes, since we are not discussing the mechanism here, so what you can do is you can straight away uh, remember that what you have to simply do is uh, this Cl uh, will get added across the double bond, all right, and this is what you will get. Clear? And yes, CCl4 definitely will act as a solvent only. So let's now match with the options. You can see in option A, we have uh, this particular thing wherein uh, two chlorine atoms are getting attached with these two double bonded carbon atoms, all right, which is definitely right. But yes, uh, it could be more, uh, you can say, correct if the CL should be, uh, you can say, arranged anti to each other, isn't it? Now, in option B, you can see this is not correct uh, because the addition of CL will take place across the pi bond only. So pi bond will no longer remain intact in the product. So this is not right. Moving to option C, uh, you can see here only one CL is getting added, which is not uh, possible. So this is not right. And in option D, you can see again only one CL is, uh, you can say, added, which is not possible. So clearly you can see that only option A is the answer to this question.